Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaican cop and scamming rap also accused of transporting cocaine in vagina and stomach. Jamaican policewoman Shalene Allen was officially indicted on Tuesday by a South Florida grand jury with importing cocaine into the United States with the intent to distribute the illegal substance, some of which were allegedly found in her vagina and stomach. The indictment charges Allen with importation of 500 grams or more of cocaine and possession with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine. If convicted, she faces up to 40 years in prison on each count. Allen was suspended from the Jamaica Constabulary Force following her arrest earlier this month in Florida in connection to the lottery scamming and drug trafficking offenses. A release from the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Florida on Tuesday stated that the 42-year-old Jamaican was arrested on February 3rd. At that time, she arrived at Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood International Airport on a flight from Montego Bay, Jamaica. An inspection by U.S. Customs and Border Protection revealed that Allen had a package of cocaine inside her vagina and a package of cocaine inside each of her bra cups, the release stated. Further, Allen also had 90 pellets of packaged cocaine inside her stomach, which she had swallowed. The Jamaican law enforcers was reportedly transported to a hospital where she expelled the 90 pellets. In total, Allen had approximately 1,350 grams of cocaine on or inside her body when she entered the United States, about 234 grams in her vagina, about 174 grams in her bra, and about 942 grams inside her stomach, disclosed the U.S. Attorney's Office. At the same time, the office reminded that an indictment merely contains allegations and a defendant is presumed innocent unless or until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Allen, who resides in Stonebrook Vista, Trelawney, is an 18-year-old veteran of the JCA. Media reports from the United States earlier this month said she had also been charged by a fraud and mail fraud. Local and federal agencies, including Homeland Security and the U.S. Portal Inspection Service, which have been conducting investigations, believe Allen is the head of a lottery scamming organization. The authorities believe the organization has several bases operating in the United States and Jamaica. A review of numerous accounts tied to this organization revealed a loss in the amount of an excess of $1.69 million from 17 victims across the country, the news report stated, citing new escort documents. Police Commissioner Anthony Anderson is responding to recent criticisms of the actions of members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. There have been statements in the public space that could be misconstrued and give the wrong impression of what the Jamaica Constabulary Force is doing. Our focus at the moment has been on gunmen, guns, and gangs. We are going to continue that focus because this is at the heart of the biggest problem that this country faces. For decades, our people have been killed by these gunmen, and they get lost in the discussion around these killings. It's important that we as the JCF put them into sharp focus. These homicides that they do, these murders, don't occur as a phenomenon. They are done by people who are carrying high-powered weapons and are using them on their fellow gang members, on members of the public, on their own families at times, and they have no qualms about using it on the police. In light of that, there have been a number of fatal confrontations where these gunmen who have been faced with arrest by the police have decided that they are going to shoot their way out of it. Once there is a conflict or a gunfight between the police and gunmen, the police need to win that gunfight 100% of the time. Every single time that a gunman and a police officer are in an armed conflict, the police officer must win. 
gunmen have made a choice and their choice is to create death, mayhem and pain in this society. Our police officers have made a choice. Their choice has been to defend this society and that's why I take that position. Now there have been some statements recently and I need to put them in context and we see this every time there are some fatal shootings and without saying it sometimes the way it is communicated to the public the public would get the impression that these fatal shootings are either improper shooting inappropriate shootings suspicious shootings we have a mechanism and that mechanism is Indicom. Indicom investigates all shootings by police officers and sometimes without the context which they rarely give without the context of how these shootings occur and what the outcomes of of Indicom reports are the wrong impression can be given to the public so in 2019 Indicom completed 612 reports the numbers I'm giving are in their quarterly reports and if you anyone can go and look at them in the back of them you will go case by case uh, with respect to fatal shootings so 612 reports were done in 2019 six of them or one percent of these reports charges were recommended by Indicom in 2020 657 cases or reports were completed 14 of them charges were recommended and these are all cases these are not just shootings in 2021 764 of these cases or reports were completed 14 of them they recommended charges now understand the recommendation of a charge means there's sufficient in a file to carry it forward to put it before the courts it does not that mean that these officers are going to be convicted now in light of of that it sets a different context than just to say six people were charged or 14 people were charged it is 14 of 600 it's either 1% or 2%. That is what we see. And I think it's important for our public to know this so that they can confidently support the JCF in what we have to do to go after the guns, the gunmen, and the gangs. With respect to the fatal shootings, in 2019, there were 82 fatal shootings. Four were recommended to have the persons involved charged, it's 4 of 82, or 5%. In 2020, there were 91 fatal shootings. Five of them were recommended for charges, or roughly 6%. In 2021, we are seeing 57 fatal shootings, of which three were recommended for charges. Now I think it's important to note that some of the officers charged with fatal shootings, these actions did not take place on the job and were domestic in nature. So in terms of on the job shootings, it's even less than that. And these are ones where the cases are such that Indicom felt that a charge should be preferred and these officers appear before the courts. It does not mean at this point that these officers are guilty. So it's important to note that our, the body that investigates us uniformly and routinely puts out reports every quarter. And for the most part, they see the shootings that occur by the JCF as necessary and appropriate and hence no charge involved in the majority of cases the public can be confident 
that the JCF, in its pursuit of the guns, of the gunmen and the gangs, that if these persons do not engage the police and submit themselves to arrest, they also will have their day in court. The other matter that came up recently in discussions is about persons with mental illnesses. And what was conveyed suggests that the Jamaica Constabulary Force uses excessive force normally against persons with mental illnesses. The truth is quite the opposite. Our officers respond to mental health cases all the time. There is a context in which mentally ill persons have been shot either fatally or shot and injured by the police. There is a context. We, in 2021, received 429 reports of violent, mentally ill persons. In some of those cases, we know prior to responding, and in other cases, on arrival, the officers who've responded, usually to an act of violence or responded to malicious destruction of property and in some cases to sexual assault when they arrive on the scene they may see the person who quite often is armed with a knife or a machete or a stone operating in a way that may suggest that they're mentally ill so of the 429 responses to violently disturbed mentally ill persons 96% of the cases were de-escalated. The officers either talked them down or subdued them and 130 of those cases the officers took that mentally ill person to a hospital for treatment. In a number of other cases working with the Ministry of Health team, uh, medication was applied to them in situ or at their premises. When these calls come in, when communities who are challenged to deal with persons who have mental health problems, especially when they don't take their medication, the call always comes to the JCF. Our officers see many of these cases. This year alone, already by mid-February, we have 153 cases of such calls that we have responded to. And it's important for our public to realize that not only do we have policies about how we deal with the mentally ill, but our officers put themselves at great risk to try and talk down these uh, mentally ill persons. And 96% of the time they do it successfully. I lost an officer last year who was killed by a mentally ill person armed with a stone. We previously had an officer go through his career without limbs because a mentally ill person chopped off his arms. These are the realities that the JCF and our officers face. And it is important, and this is why I'm making this video, it is important that our officers feel supported in what they do. It's important that our public have the confidence to know that JCF officers turn up at these situations all the time with what they have to a cry for help from the public. One of the cases that was highlighted recently on air in Westmoreland where a mentally ill person was shot by the police. Interestingly enough, the police officer were responding to an attempted rape of a woman. On responding, our reports are 
that the mentally ill person attempted on more than one occasion to wrestle the officer's weapon away from them. Eventually he was shot once. This is still the subject of investigation, so I won't say anything more about it, but it is context. Our officers are not out there randomly shooting mentally ill persons, and any suggestion of it is creating the wrong impression totally. It's important that our public know us. It's important that as the commissioner, I make myself available to say these things. And it's important that my officers are confident enough to do their job under the most difficult and most violent of circumstances, knowing that their commissioner and the high commander of the JCF supports them as long as they're operating professionally and within the law. Our officers need to be free to act in an environment where violence will come upon them suddenly and they need to protect themselves and the public. So whether it is a fatal shooting because a gunman had decided to turn his weapon on the police or a mentally ill person who is so violent that they're going to harm a member of the public or of the police force, they will use the appropriate force to deal with these matters and we will support that. My men and women of this force need to go forward confidently, otherwise they will never, we will never as a country solve this problem of violence and violent actors who are willing to create death, mayhem and pain in our communities. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.